Hello and welcome to another episode of Allegedly NYC. I'm Nomi Ruiz. And I'm Eva San Rujo. And we are your go-to Boricuas for all the tea, all the time. All the goddamn time. Whether it's hot and steamy. Whether you have to burn your lip but you still want more. (laughs) Boring and sloppy. Boring. Oh, that's how I like my men. I like I'm a little stupid. A little dumb. A little tonto. The tontos. How you doing, girl? Good. How, I had, you know, how was your week? It was a good week, right? It was cute. I'm having a hard time um, mm. oh. um, trying to watch The Affair. Little <sighs> girl. You know, you invest so much of your time, so much of your Sundays. Girl. Like, I maneuver a whole Sunday to watch that show. I might even get to work late because I might want to see on a Monday morning when I'm putting on an eye. Right. It's usually right? like keeps me up, keeps me stimulated. Yeah. Keeps me like, like contemplating life and Girl. like love and like scandal. And now it's just like so fucking bad. Sometimes you just have to say when and when was maybe last season. Maybe, you know, there's characters that left the show. And Girl. now it's like, it's so, it's just not, it's not ending well. Girl, the oh, you've affair, had so much time. <laughs> the affair has become a bore. When you, every time we text each other, <laughs> girl, the affair, and we're like, I'm like, the show. <laughs> I know we're both confused. I'm like, wait, what's she talking about? No, the show. The show. I'm like, she's like, Because we have to do that because hashtag like, we've had fun. Was the affair good? And I'm like, the show? The show? <laughs> Oh my god, I can't even. Nasty. Oh my god. Uh, another show that I I haven't watched, but Ava has been trying to convince me to watch is oh. 90210. Girl, it's hilarious. I can't. I okay, first of all, first episode is like, uh, cringe, yikes. And then it gets like proper funny. Like funny. I can't. First of all, everyone still has like a dollar sign in this, like sticked in the back of their neck. Like it is refreshed. Everyone is well rested except for Gabriel. Gabriel, 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 yeah, she kept it really real. Gabriel Gabriel Carteris. Yeah, she kept it really real. Okay, well, speaking of her, I just recently was reading an article where she's saying when she was asked to be in the reboot, she said, I didn't want to be an old nerd. She wanted her character to explore her sexuality. Oh, Christ. She says, older women at this last stage in their life are what? looking to explore who they want to be sharing their lives with. And she goes on to say... The so re- last call is pussy, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you're in your late 50s, 60s, you're like, mm, she, I've yeah. been sucking the same dick. Girl. New chapter. New chapter. New carpet. <laughs> <laughs> she says women come to a time in their lives where mm-hmm. they raise their kids, they've yeah. had their careers, uh-huh. their kids leave home, yeah. and they're deciding, am I committing to my relationship? It's been a great ride. Do I want to stay here? Maybe there's something else. See, I'm thinking maybe when I get all, I'll, I'll, I'll try anal. I'm not even thinking about other sex. I'm like, maybe I should do like <laughs> one the butt and one of my pussy. At like 50. At 50. Fuck it. <laughs> My desire will be different. Oh, my God. By then, I'm doing the opposite. I'm like, how do I calm myself down? I'm like, how do I amp this up? How do I... I don't know. Granny porn. Do missionary again. <laughs> missionary. I just want to get off my knees. <laughs> she better work. Is she still married? I don't know. But she looks good. I mean, she's the only one that kept it real in the face. You know, except for the guys. The guys are all, like, That show makes rough. me want to go get a fake, uh, cheap facelift. Girl, I'm sure we're in Bushwick. There's everyone. <laughs> Somebody's it's, doing something in a railroad somewhere. <laughs> it's probably where I saw you can get your eyelash extensions for $30. Girl, staples. <laughs> staple them on. They staple them <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, this episode is part one of a two-part series. Yes. This first part will focus on disclosure with those who are HIV positive mm-hmm. and sexually active. Yes. Um, I was curious to know how people navigate their relationships and mm-hmm. sex life when they're aware of their status. Dating, the whole thing. Yeah, it started with like a conversation with a mutual friend of ours yes. who is actually our guest. Yes. Mr. Well, Siler. My son. Oh, this is Ava's son. This actually. is my son. Yeah, her gay son. My gay son. Um, I didn't have to ruin my pussy for her. <laughs> Genius. Not even a surrogate. Not even a surrogate. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to pay nobody for this. They just import this. them. Yeah, I used to cross the hall. Yeah, like, hey, need a mom? <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> 
part two will focus on disclosure within the trans community, more specifically with uh, trans women and how we approach telling our partners yes. um, that we are of trans experience. You know, mm -hmm. when's the right time? How to go about it? In some cases, is it even necessary? Yes. Part one was previously recorded, so we'll get right into it with our guests. Yes. Siler. Siler, little my little muffin. Oh, okay. My little muffin. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. And we are joined by a good friend of yes, Allegedly. Very good friend. Of ours. Uh, makeup artist extraordinaire, Siler D. Siler D. Woo! Welcome to Allegedly. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Come close. Yes. Yeah. Feel free. Don't be scared oh, of for me. Mind. Thank you. Don't Come a little scared. closer. <laughs> Thank you. Come a little closer. Throw here. <laughs> My gynecologist always says it. She's like, closer. I'm like, <laughs> and I scoot down. She's like, closer. <laughs> I'm like, she's like, I'm like now. She's like, closer. Close enough. <laughs> well, Tyler, you um, you came into our lives two years ago now. Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago now. And where are you from? Austin, Texas. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sunny yeah. Austin. That's where I was living before here. I grew up on the East Coast when I was younger. My right. dad was in, my stepdad was in the military and we moved all around, but Austin's where I call home now. Oh, Austin. that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. really nice. Mm -hmm. And now New York, too. I know New York. Well, New York is now home, but when I need New to get York away gets, from home. Yeah. But we have a cute little story because Siler lived across the hall from me. I did. I did. So, and yeah. I saw this cute boy. I was like, what's all this? <laughs> and I was like, you know, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Okay. And then was it was I was I blasting drag race? Oh uh, yeah, was, the thing was that I would come over to your house every single day. Yeah, or I would come over to I would come home every single day, and as I was unlocking my front door, I would just hear RuPaul's Drag Race blasting out of your apartment. <laughs> And all I ever wanted to do was just like knock on the door and, and ask to join. But I also like had no idea what I was doing. I mean, it was my very first time to ever really be in New York City. Yeah. And so I didn't know who lived across the hallway at that point. You know, I just wanted to see you in the hallway she first. Probably, he probably thought it was like a bunch of queens in or here. A bunch of queens. A bunch of queens. <laughs> and you know, were right. Right. And it was <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay well Siler is joining us as, as a, in a very special episode of Allegedly yes very special We're, um, this is part one of a two part series on disclosure mm -hmm. and you actually inspired this uh, yes. this Topic. The topic, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I remember you were very open about your HIV positive status, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I remember we once had a conversation about disclosure where um, I was talking to you about a situation where I was I slept with a guy and, and he did it. He was unaware that I was trans, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just assumed he was because that he knew I was because we had a lot of mutual friends mm -hmm. and blah, blah blah. So I was we were we started like kicking about that story and how people sometimes tell me that like I don't. I shouldn't have, I feel like the need to tell people because I'm post-op and there's like the, all these little like nuance mm -hmm. politics about like disclosure and, mm -hmm. and when's the right time to tell and, and if it's necessary right. and then you sort of related to it with yes. um, sort of disclosing your HIV status yeah. to your partners and that's how we sort of Totally, we got into yeah. this, this I, conversation. I it was such a good convo, I remember. It was. Yeah. And we were like, yeah. damn, we gotta like yeah. make this part of the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The AIDS and HIV community have a long history of being stigmatized mm -hmm. by a society that hasn't quite grasped their history along with developments in healthcare. Mm -hmm. But as science finds ways in which to suppress and prevent the spread of HIV, this is where the conversation comes in. Why is disclosure still an issue for so many carriers? Recent studies show that patients in serodiscordant relationships, serodiscordant, which is when one partner is positive and the other is negative, have a 0% chance of transmitting the virus when infected partner is on medication that suppresses the virus and keeps their immune system healthy, even when the negative partner is not even on pre-exposure prophylactics, which is PrEP, which is... <laughs> The if people out there don't know, it's explain what's prep. Oh, uh, it's you're taking HIV medication. Um, technically, it, it is one one of the drugs that is used um, in a cocktail of different ones to treat yeah. um, HIV. But it is a basically like a preventative vitamin in a way to not get HIV because it. Um, I mean, if to dumb it down, the you know this isn't super technical, but. It, HIV medication, basically, one of the things that it does, in addition to helps to help suppress the virus, I should say, is that it uh, almost like coats your T cells with like a you know protective coating. So in that way, you're almost taking a like vitamin 
it, you know and yeah. again this is very dumbed down that's not the scientific way to explain that whatsoever <laughs> right, right, but right, right. In a, you know in a very simplistic way you're almost taking like a preventative vitamin it's like birth control for gays you yeah. know right on um, I'm, I'm on it, it now do, do you have, you have to take it every now. yeah you take it every day take it every day it is a birth control yeah it okay. is birth control because okay. if you stop taking it um, your uh, chances of resistance go up well if you're on medication because you have HIV and you stop taking it then your uh, eventually your you know T cell count will go down and the HIV uh, you know copies in your blood will go up and they'll take they'll take back over your body and then right. at that point they can will uh create resistance to the drugs that you've been taking because that's what they know that they've been fighting against so now that they've had a second to chill out and mm -hmm. reproduce and become better against that drug they become resistant to it and then right. you have to switch your drugs if you want to bring it you know if you want to become healthy and right yeah um it's just a, a laundry list of things that you just don't want to have to deal with um right. and the same thing with prep if you stop taking prep then it's not going to work because it won't right. be in your system anymore it metabolizes quite quickly through your blood right um and so it's you know the depending on what you're taking um, you know, if you have HIV, will stay in your blood a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but the but prep itself like metabolizes quite quickly, yeah. Okay. And uh, so that means that if you stop taking it, you're not protected. Yeah. It's only it's only against HIV. Yeah, um, it's not herpes. It's, it's not, not herpes, chlamydia. No, it's not the herpes. It's yeah. not the chlamydia. It's just not so the guys, the people gun. know. Yeah, it's yeah. just for one. Unfortunately, yeah. we haven't come up with that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Pull up my yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sign me up when they start doing clinical injections. Uh, I sign me up to that too. Yeah, I'm right. Shit. Sure. I'm exhausted. Well, I, I want to get it again. <laughs> Okay. We've all had to there. take a shake. Right. <laughs> Not the 90s, the early 2000s. Right, we all got that shot. Here's, in the ass. Yeah, here's a, here's a shake and two pills. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, conversations like this are important because a lot of people are not even educated on on healthcare and and like preventative measures. It's I, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Is this like? It's. I think it has to do with because HIV and AIDS has been so stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. In 2008, researchers found that the suppression of HIV virus would prevent the spread of HIV, and scientists have supported these claims since 2011, mm -hmm. when the National Institute um, for Health and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed these studies. But it wasn't until 2017 mm -hmm. that this became viable information that health providers began to share with their patients. Mm -hmm. Even then, there's been like a reluctance from providers because of the stigma placed on people living with HIV, a stigma that basically says people with HIV are dangerous and can't be trusted because we're sluts <laughs> we're sluts so no why do you think it took so long for this information to get into the hands of the public even when the community seemed to be aware and practicing viral suppression for years that is a great question and i think it all has to boil down to the fact that the people making our healthcare laws are old white men um who old white christian men who have no grasp on the reality of the situation and have no interest in having a grasp on the reality of the situation because right. hiv is only something that some, something that happens to you know homo sluts and right. Uh, right. and to drug users so you know in and uh, in their mind, you know, so it becomes, you know, almost it's just not a priority whatsoever for them to uh, push that through. There's also, um, and I know sometimes I sound super conspiracy theorist when I say these things, but there's Go also on. a lot of money involved in HIV care yes. uh, that Gilead has a iron fisted patent on. Right. So anything that is going to move forward, it's going to move forward on their dime and on their budget. You right. know, and they are going to be the ones that help Peter the information out. And um, you also had people like um, Michael Weinstein, yes, who ran the the name escapes me, but he was one of the original um, people from the AIDS epidemic who started um, an organization for right, HIV right. Aware and AIDS awareness. He publicly came out against PrEP and um, was a, a huge dissenter about it because he believed that it would make us more slutty we would start having more unprotected sex because we finally could and then we you know it would just be a it wouldn't work to help suppress the virus because we would still be having so much of this other sex that we'd be spreading all this other stuff and again it's just like there's a lot of slut shaming in it there's a lot of, a ton right, of slut yeah, shaming. i mean we live in a puritanical society so you know and the, yeah. the, the fact that a high percentage of people with hiv are people of color so yeah, there's a bit of exactly. like other types of discrimination exactly. that go along with it 110 mm -hmm. yeah. percent yeah um I was always thinking it's 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 been so easy for me to feel like really informed about AIDS and HIV because we live in New York and I have mm -hmm. like Colin Lord and right. I never like until now I was doing all this research and I was just stopping to think about like kids mm -hmm. in like in rural America or like yeah. in Texas yeah you know? like I, I always wondered like where uh, where were you 
informed about like your your health options yeah. and, and like what was it like for you when you were sort of like navigating your way through this process? Well, the uh, prep became like available as like a something that people were actually talk were you know like as if something being advertised as like a you know preventative measure. Right. The year I got HIV actually, so like I got it and then prep came out sure. as like a you know publicly, which right. I guess they've been doing a lot of trials that I think I had maybe been. I mean, at this point, it's so hard to remember. It's been, like, six years. But, like, I feel like there was a... I feel like there may have been, like, some whispers in Austin about, like, a clinical trial that I could get into or something right. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think... And was I, that through um, sort of, like, your peers and friends or, like, through your Medicaid... Like, Medicare provider? Uh, that would have been through my peers and friends because until I had HIV, I didn't have health care. Mm -hmm. um, because I... You know, I had moved, been kicked out at 17. I hadn't had a steady job in, you know, five years up until that point. So, right. uh, you know, and if I did, it was at a restaurant. So they're not going to give me health insurance. So right, because you come from really, like, conservative. Come from very conservative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you kind of gagged Which me. Another... One time across, <laughs> one time, when, you, when you were, we were doing uh, the film here, you guys left all these, like, uh, saint candles mm -hmm. and I gave I went next door I was like oh do you want some candles and he's like I don't do this like, <laughs> like I don't know what is this because like, you came from a cult you came I did from a cult. I was raised in this evangelical cult um, oh my god yeah. in the sixth he's like who are these people that's like a whole other <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah that's a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to get into that separately yeah but, you know, that also informed a lot of the decisions that I made as an adult where I was so suppressed growing up in this religious, um, cultish environment that um, when I finally was on my own, I tend to be the type to always seek out new information anyways. And, right. and, and um, you know, and I was also... Um, I was not also not I wasn't non-discriminatory when it came to other people with HIV so if they had HIV mm -hmm. um, I wasn't necessarily that didn't like immediately scare me away because by this point you know there was some research going on as we knew right. it just wasn't very well known and the people that knew about it were the people with HIV right so if I right. remember the first time that it came up in my um, like in my line of view was when I was hooking up with someone I was gonna hook up with someone he was on grinder and he was explaining the science of it behind me and then that's when I went and started doing my own research and found out about it um but by that point it was you know all too late when life gives you AIDS make lemonades so uh, <laughs> you know you would uh you that's probably know t-shirt yeah, right we found, our, we found our slogan I remember one time we were opening mail here it was like uh, insurance mail and you're like oh my god I just got insurance like but AIDS is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Like, I probably have insurance. <laughs> no, like, and I think that in the um, in the in the spirit of learning and, and 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 verbiage, I guess, AIDS is really only what happens when you get uh, when your T cell drops below two hundred. Yeah, so uh, we're talking about point, HIV. Yeah, so so un, up until that point, and in, and after that point, you only have a, you only have HIV. But when you have AIDS, your your uh, that means that you've dropped into a like a very high risk um, pool of uh, blood work and whatnot. So, um, but you know, honestly, I feel like the best way to try to get th through some of the stigma a lot of times is you know through humor because if you can't laugh at it, you can't be comfortable around yeah, it. Yeah, you know that's I mean? true. That's and so And you'd true. never guess that I was middle aged. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at an ages. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I know I look up for my AIDS. So. Why do you look up your oh AIDS? God. Oh my god. <laughs> well, <laughs> the yeah, yeah. 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 We were so nervous about this as being serious, and now we're having a good time. I know, yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, that's, and that's the thing is that it, it is at the end of the day, it is a very serious conversation because it's something that affects all of our lives. But the reality of it is that it is, you know, like there's humor in everything, and mm -hmm. um, and again, I think that if you can laugh at something then you can at least approach it a little bit more comfortably yes um, and, that's and calmly also, and calmly exactly and much more calmly yeah um, get, keep them laughing and yeah you know, it all works out so I try to either way whatever helps the conversation yes happen. exactly because I think it's really important exactly. for everyone it's to definitely sort of conversation. have more of these conversations mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to talk a bit of, about the criminalization of, mm -hmm. of HIV mm -hmm. I think what has actually fueled the stigma, stigmatization of HIV has been the laws which have criminalized HIV since the 90s when the HIV epidemic first paralyzed communities across the country. The laws state that people living with HIV who are aware of their status and who could potentially expose others to HIV during acts of consensual, protected, or unprotected sex, spitting or biting mm -hmm. with the underlying notion that blood, saliva, and semen are biological weapons and are as dangerous as firearms and, and can be persecuted under criminal law. 
in 24 states, laws require people who are aware of their status to disclose to sexual partners, and 14 states require disclosure to needle-sharing partners. Between 2008 and 2016, there have been 279 reported persecution cases. A 20-year-old man in New Jersey was sentenced to four years for having sexual relations with two women without disclosing his status, and in Iowa, a 34-year-old person living with HIV was convicted of knowingly spreading HIV and for reckless exposure of a contagious disease, although he did not infect the others mm -hmm. who were exposed. Mm -hmm. He received a year in jail and, and credit for time served. So in essence, what these laws say is whether you transmit this disease to a sexual partner or not, and whether you have protected or unprotected sex or not, you're at risk of being persecuted under criminal law if you do not disclose your status and can be even registered as a sex offender. Mm -hmm. And these laws don't really take into account the developments with, with science and, and, and um, medicines that have now caused people to be HIV sort of undetectable. This, this right. is undetectable, untransmittable right. thing going on. Right. Um, so I'm curious what you think about that level of disclosure and is that something you think about when you're when you have partners or what's like how does that affect you in thinking about the way it's been criminalized uh well the criminalization of it um does as and i believe even in new york city it does uh, require it tends to be worded in a way that says you know a chance of passing passing along to someone or, or infecting them yeah and technically I can't do that. So, right. um, so it's a very gray area at the moment because, as you said, um, most of those laws were written back in the 90s. And a lot of those laws were also written because some states had um, thought that it, because of a the federal mandate that was attached to uh, the Ryan White funding for yeah. HIV care um, through the state like through the um, the, the state uh, legislatures, mm -hmm. it um, required them to have some sort of like initiative to try to help reduce the amount of unprotected sex that was going around um, and spreading the disease. Right. So um, a, lot of, a lot of states just made these, um, also in part made these laws because they believed that they had to um, in order to be able to secure funding. But as we see, because there's a variation of states with and without these laws, that right. obviously wasn't the case. But then again, a lot of these um, were also very conservative states. Um, and um, and so as far as like the criminalization and like how that affects my disclosure to my partners, my disclosure actually, like criminalization has never really even often, honestly entered my mind. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because, mostly because the people with whom I am um, having sex almost always already know beforehand mm -hmm. because typically we're probably meeting online mm -hmm. right? and if we're meeting in a bar and we're about to go home then I'll probably tell you like right then so I can just chill with my friends at the bar in case it is a problem uh -huh. or I can like bounce and go home and ride but the um, but the the disclosure part of it is always a uh, if it's not a like a prerequisite on your on your profile um, for you to know or to not know what my status is, then um, the disclosure is, can always be really difficult. It, the, honestly, the, the the disclosure itself for me has always been more of an emotionally like moral issue rather yeah. than a moral moral like a like a legal moral issue right. because like legally. Come, oh, wait, you're going to press charges against me because you had yeah, sex with right. me and I haven't well, had my HIV, thing, but you can't get it. Let me yeah. ask you a question, though. Like, let, if, let's say you wanted to be, like, you, you yourself wanted to, um, if it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, whatever, mm -hmm. you always mm -hmm. fuck mm -hmm. for the best. You mm -hmm. hope for the best. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> fuck, but for like, the best, yeah, yeah. fuck for the best. Yeah, fuck for the best. That's my new tagline. <laughs> fuck for the best. Fuck for the best. Yeah. But I'm just, what, my question to you is, let's say you're intimate with somebody, you haven't really told them, but mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, mm, this guy, I think... I think there's something there. Like, I think I want to be, you know, yeah. like, I want to try, I want to try this yeah. out. And you haven't told him yet. And when, when would be the time to say, so, you know, I have HIV, I'm not detectable. Like, right. be, you know, I'm, I'm just want to let you know if we're going to move any further, I want to be open and honest with you. Like, where, 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 when does that come in? And, and if you want to start courting somebody. Uh, um, well, last time, apparently, on the ferry back from, uh, <laughs> from fucking Islands? Jacob Reese Island. Oh, uh -huh. Jacob oh, Reese Jacob Reese. Right, uh -huh. yeah. Um, no, so, I actually, it's interesting because I just went through this exact experience, um, mm -hmm. you know, a week ago. So, I had been, um, you know, 
seeing someone, okay. um, it, you know, like just very light, lightly dating. Okay. Um, he actually has me on a super fucking slow burn, which has been really hot, but also at the same time, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, uh, <laughs> ba- this, this, this mama clock, this baby clock's ticking. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't have much time left. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's been, I'm bored. I'm bored. <laughs> yeah. Show me that really yeah. work. Show me that dick. Yeah. Oh my god. Just show me the fucking dick. So oh, I don't have a lot of time here. Yeah. Um, and there are boys waiting. Like Hello, for an it's answer. summertime. It's yeah, summertime. It's summer. Thank it's you. It's tank tops. It's tank tops. You know, and what's what's worse about it is that it's <laughs> coming into cuffing season, so I need to see the dick soon to see if it's worth getting on the train. Right. For it. You know summer I mean? was like, you know, that's when you like audition in the exactly. summer. Exactly. You audition for the in the summer. We give callbacks in the winter. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Once we see that first leaf fall. <laughs> <laughs> We start sending out notices. Yeah, I'm like, I just, oh my god, I know. I looked around and all of a sudden the leaves are all on the ground. I'm like, oh my god, stop. Oh, it's happening. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> um, so for me, when it comes into being intimate, that's when I say it's more of an emotionally moral thing for me because, um, you know, I am a really good judge of character. So most of the time, too, if I've met you and we've met through friends and then you're like, hey, would you want to hang out sometime? I'm like, sure, let's go hang out. We go have drinks. It goes really well. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're on another date and it's that one's going really well. And by this point, I'm like, okay, we're like two dates into this. Like, and then we go on to maybe a third date and that goes really well, too. And, and you know, maybe you come to a party with me and you meet a bunch of my friends and then I end oh, up wow. meeting some of your friends because we go to a party that you want to go to. So, like, yeah, by this right. point, we've now been on like six days dates mm. where I'm not necessarily trying to like ruin the mood potentially with the fun that we're having. Right. Um, but at the same time, also going to the point where I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I've made a lot of time for you, which means that I clearly see something here. And, um, by this point I would hope that I have a good enough read of this person to know how they would probably react. Right. Um, and I do. And have like, you been intimate with them at this point? Uh, I have no. not been intimate with this person at this point. Um, we've made out and that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we made out a lot and that, you know, I've, and I've actually been like left on the train, you know, like right at the, right at the moment when you think they're gonna come home with you, all of a sudden he like gives you a kiss and then jumps off the train. It's like, okay, oh I'll God, see you later. So oh my cute. God. Oh. I'm kind of into that. That's so corny. It was. And like the second and third and fourth time, that was cute. And the fifth time, it was... He's like, my dick. (laughs) (laughs) Let me touch that dick. Let's go. What am I working with? What am I working with? What am I working with? Exactly. Um, But, (laughs) yeah, and are we... Is this going to be good enough to be in a exclusive relationship or not right Right. no but the the, the, which is uh, tricky because like for me part of knowing that is being intimate exactly where you're like i really don't know if i'm you're a keeper unless exactly unless i know if if we're sexually compatible enough that i I can wake up next to you and have sex with you right you know because like i can because like a majority of the people that i have the best sex of my life with are people that i would never want to date so regardless of whether or not they know or not it makes no it, it shifts their reality in no way whatsoever as it affects them. Right. It only shifts the reality of how they view me now through whatever right. lens that they may have that they may be looking at my HIV status through. Right. So I have this, um, so there's always this dilemma on like when to tell someone and typically I'll tell someone, you know, within the first like couple times of seeing them. But at this point we've probably also gotten somewhat intimate so I can be like, Hey, you know, right before he sticks it in be like, Oh, by the way, um, I know you're at the door, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I do have HIV and I'm undetectable if that's, you know, and just so you know, and typically they're like, okay, cool. Bloop. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> get him right there. Right, exactly. And then they go. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, it's kind of like when you have a hookup over and they're not as hot as you thought they were by that point, you're already horny and naked. So fine. Fuck it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fuck for the best. Yeah. Oh so, um, so, you know, or I might tell them, you know, over a text message, especially if I think they'll probably take it pretty cool. Uh, I mean, right. I might just like keep it to a text message because it's like, whatever. At this point for me, it does that feel safer? Like for me, when I tell it a guy, my, my, oh, my, yeah. Yeah, my tea, I usually like to do it over. Cause you never know how someone's going to react. Gonna react. Gonna, yeah. someone's gonna react. And you can yeah. always, so you have that same, think out your messages a lot better than you can say them in person in that moment. Yeah. Right. And so you're good at that. What? With the good, with the, a very with the te- informative text message. Yes. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Um, oh, I remember you. Uh, I used him for that. Remember? <laughs> That's right. Remember she cc'd. I got, I got uh, was it? I don't know. I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. It was gonorrhea. Mm-hmm. Was it gonorrhea? Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. I got gonorrhea, and I was, yeah. Yeah, I remember. So <laughs> I was like, "Can you help me write a text?" Yeah, like you know, like yeah. a very responsible text. <laughs> a very responsible text that was not apologizing for the fact no. that I have gonorrhea because no. guess what? No. You had it too. Yeah, and yeah. He, he gave, gave it to me. me. Yeah, he, he gave it to me. Yeah, he gave it to me. So it's like she basically copy pasted. I did. I copy pasted, and he and he wrote back. That must have been a very hard text, right? And I was like, you were like. Yeah. You're so accurate. You're yeah. gagging me right <laughs> yeah. now. Oh my god. He's like, thank you for telling me that. One must have been t- very hard for you to tell. And then in that in that moment, you're like, well, I still don't honestly know how you feel about it. Oh, it took so. him forever to finally get the test. And She's like, so you want a bone? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was so like, you know what? In seven days, you can make a bone. Seven days. Go get treated now so we can link up. Um, my when it I so a lot of times it's over a text message. Um, it's way easier. It's way quicker. It's way more painless. I can be a lot more like logistical info while also being soft about it. Be like, hey, you know, just so you know, I'm HIV positive, detectable, what's your stats? Or I'll be like, hey, when's the last time you got tested? What's your stats? I'll straight up ask them right. because now I'm forcing you to tell me so that I can give you an answer back. Right. And also, at the end of the day, if we have sex and you didn't ask me, that is your own fucking fault because mm-hmm. it is your responsibility to protect yourself. I am protecting myself and everyone else by taking my medication. So at this point, it's safer to fuck me than it would be to go and raw dog like someone you, you're, else. Like you're holding fort. I'm holding fort. So you don't <laughs> feel responsible for informing I your do partner. Not, I do not feel I do you not feel, feel like it's their responsibility to I do um, <laughs> feel it's their responsibility. I, feel, I do not feel And that's because you're undetectable. Or so, because I'm undetectable, yes. If I had something that could they, they could easily pick up, like if I had herpes, which, you know, f- fucking cross my heart and hope to cry that I yeah. don't, you know, but all adventurous women do I, one day, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. So if I had I'm herpes sorry. or <laughs> HPV or, I mean, you know, like. It's a, it's a blessing. Yeah, exactly. It's a blessing that I don't have yet, but candles. <laughs> exactly, we lit some candles right to, to ward off the HPV. But you know, like or HPV or you know herpes. Like if I had something that everybody I, has HPV, everybody, everybody has HPV. Has HPV. Exactly. If you, if yeah. you don't have HPV, you're then nobody. I don't want to fuck. You. <laughs> I think what I think I think is cool for people to know is that because I've been in situations where guys have been like, I have herpes. I need to tell mm. you this before. Right. And I'm like, well, well, thank you so yeah, much. It's, it's almost like it's not as bad as you think and mm-hmm. it's it almost like a type of intimacy I feel like when mm-hmm. you when you're in that mm-hmm. moment when you're vulnerable and mm-hmm. you're sort of disclosing being this thing super honest. that's mm-hmm. really personal yeah. and it, you, they can see that maybe you're very vulnerable mm-hmm. and very like I think a part of that actually connects you more with, I with a partner I 110% agree um, there have been times when I have uh, you know because I think I think for me I guess the fantasy for me is always if I'm going to tell you and it's in person and it's in an intimate vulnerable it will, vulnerable moment the fantasy is that you're going to be like oh wow me too right and then we're going to fall in love and we're going to get married oh right there god. on the bed yeah, you know? oh my god yeah you're going to put the cock ring on and it'll be there forever oh so, god you uh, have a summer share on Fire Island. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. It just pops up on your email. Yeah. Right. But um, but you know the reality is that it's 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 more of like an eighty twenty sometimes. Yeah. Um, I would it's say. Complex. But uh, you know like. But in New York City, especially, I find that it is almost, it's, it's, I mean, in a way, it's almost like they prefer me to have it because then they know exactly what I've got. They know that I'm seeing a doctor every three three months at least. I mean, right. I go to my doctor every month just for a, an STD check, even if I hadn't had sex. Right. Because that's the a part before. of it. It's like a trust aspect where, like, mm-hmm. then they have to trust that you're taking your medications regularly, that you're taking care of your health. So, right. like, like, I think when you do disclose, mm-hmm. they have a, a bit more mm-hmm. of like a trust that you like, are wow, this on person's top not of trying it. to fuck me over. Right. They, and the, the, the end of the story of the, with this boy that I just told is that he, um, we went on all the, like, I don't know, like five or six or seven dates by this point. Um, oh, we've hung a, lot. a lot, that's a lot, a lot. So like, it's a little excessive and <laughs> I still haven't even seen the, so I haven't Without even felt boning? the dick. Wait, so still haven't even wait, felt the dick. Haven't no, seen a picture. Not even a pain print? Not even, I'm, I've seen, the, I know he has a penis because we went to, to the beach together. Are you sure? What kind of bathing suit? <laughs> 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 fucking long You never know. Just, just oh, so you can't even back see the, to the picture. Then. Then. Right, right. Just closure. And if you're right, taking right, a- right back to the dress closure. The, the board shorts may have been my he first clue. He didn't tell you his tea. <laughs> right. Um, but we were, we were on the beach together, and, and this conversation um, came up about um, healthcare because he, he had... Um, like he had like a, like a lung thing, um, oh. that sometimes like pops up that, um, and he's had to go to the doctor for it before. And cause I'd seen this little scar. I was like, Oh, what's that from? Yeah. Just tell me about this. He has interesting scar stories. And, um, and I was like, wow, that must've been really scary. Did you have health insurance? Um, and, but by that point, his friend was at the, in this, was like sitting with us and I don't mind being open about my stuff. And I just didn't feel like 
including her into that whole loop of the conversation. You know, right, yeah, I'm still trying to figure not. out this dude, you know? Who, yeah. And so, um, so I was like, wow, that must have been really scared. You have health insurance? And he was like, yeah, thankfully. And he started on that thing. And I was like, oh, this would be a perfect time. But then I'm like, ugh, no, like, I don't... The, it's, it's like double dutch. You're like, do yeah, I go exactly. now? Do I go on or do yeah. I not? Like, do I jump in or do I not? Yeah, you're like, mm-hmm. and so it didn't happen that time. Right. And then the next time we were gonna hang out, we were gonna go to a dance party together later that night. And I had been on the beach all day, um, and had been like, at, you know, by this point, I was like, all right. I'm going to tell him tonight. Like, when we're at the club, like, I'll just be like, listen, I I like you, and I, uh, you know, want to continue to, like, get to know you, but I also want to just be, like, honest about my shit so I don't feel like I'm holding anything back, and then that way, you know, because, again, it's more of, like, a morally ethical thing at this point because I'm like, it's not like it's going to medically affect you, but... You know the ethics, right? Of why but didn't some you people tell don't understand that. Some people don't even know that. Exactly. It's still to this day, which because I feel we're informed. So, yeah. but it's we're living a little bit of a bubble because we like, live in a, so much of a bubble that yeah. there's so much information and just like um, that is both withheld and also just not like available in mm-hmm. so much of this country. That, and like going back to the stigma, you know, people scare the shit out of us with AIDS. And actually, obviously, mm-hmm. because so much crazy mm-hmm. shit happened, we all have lost somebody. Oh, yeah. It was scary. Yeah. And it was so scary with the imagery and, like, movies and yeah. studies and, like, the whole Reagan era, like, not doing anything. Right. And people just, just dropping, 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 yes. dropping like flies. Yes. So... People still have that. It's like, you know... Trauma. It's trauma. It, it is, is trauma. a little trauma. Yeah. and Collective trauma, too, and, which and, is even more powerful yeah, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So, there, it's... it's And it's tricky because it's mixed with discrimination because it affects absolutely. the queer community. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's very like, much you so. Know, people treat, you know... And this, disproportionately this. people of color. So, like, queer people of color. Right. Like, that's the, the zenith of it, yeah. you know? Yeah, so it's mm-hmm. a lot. It's very nuanced, the discrimination. Yeah. Um, but eventually I ended up telling him over text message on my, on the ferry back because I was like, you know what, if I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him now. So he just doesn't show up if that's a thing for him. And it'll also give him like maybe time to just like react himself because he, you know, like wrapped in all this, he's kind of, he he seems like a a bit green in, in, in the New York queer world and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming, just kind of discovering who he is himself. So I'm like, this may be. Like and he's met me at peak side. Like I was in a little mini skirt and a crop top when he first met me on the subway in the subway station. Oh so, my god, it's so cute! I, yeah, I so can't. Like, I'm I'm already, I've already been like, I love your Britney Spears look. Thank you. <laughs> you wore it to Britney. Yeah. Uh, to- I did. Oh, yeah. yeah, you did see it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, oops, oops, I did. Um, it was the, the, definitely the oops look. Yeah. And um, so I was already, at, I've been at peak Siler already. So it's not like I've been holding back on how you know extra I can be. But uh, but this this I know can be a little scary for people, and and I'm not unaware of that fact. And so I was like, you know, let me let me not dump this on him in person where he thinks he has to react a certain way. So um, I texted him and I was just like, hey, just so you know, um, been looking for the right time to, to, to bring this up, but there really it never is. So here it is. I have HIV. Um, I've had it for six years now. I'm perfectly healthy and I'm undetectable, um, you know, which means I'm untransmittable. I was kind of including information that he may already know, but chances are he may not. Yeah, we, we can't assume that. Because we have no idea. We, we can't assume that because assume. some people really still don't have know. No, have like, no idea. Like the moms of, like people in my oh, mom's yeah. age don't know. They don't know that. They don't know that shit. They, don't know they that all, shit. you know, my, my mom lost her cousin, uh, uh, to AIDS in, oh. in, in the late nine no, early nineties. Wow. Early nineties. So, you know, she, she, she it was very She's quick. She's very herself. quick. Yeah. Trauma. But I don't think she, I mean, and, and that's, that's not something think, she thinks about, but I don't think she's aware. Oh yeah, of for sure. For sure. The medical and the science of it all. You know, a yeah. lot of people don't, you can't, a lot you, of people don't. You can't know what you don't know. Exactly. And so, so, so what do you have to say? He texts, at first it was just like a little, it was just like, no answer for like five minutes and I'm, I'm like I like the bubbles it's clenching up there wasn't, there wasn't no even a bubble oh, no bubble. there wasn't oh, even no a bubble. bubble so you're <sighs> white you're like you have that shit oh, oh my god yeah, I'm just like I'm like like knuckles white um and then he texts me back and is like <laughs> <laughs> And he texted me and he said, uh, it was, uh, it said, thank you for like, basically it was oh. like, thank you for, um, yeah, thank you for telling me this. I'm sure that, that or like, it was a basically like, thank you for telling me this because I'm sure it was not easy whatsoever, um, to oh, say. And yes. you know, he, he's like, I like you regardless and you're very special to me, even the short time that I've known you. Um, but I was like, the, the wording of it was still rather ambiguous of whether or not it was like a, let's move forward with getting to know right. each other or like, let's just that's be friends. Where, that's, I'll see you tonight. Well, that, that's where it's better to say in person, I guess. Exactly. That's the one thing, because you don't get, can't get the tone. Because you can't, can't get the tone. Oh, exactly. Right. But then he sent a follow-up message that oh, was like, um, that 
said, naturally, I'm curious and would love to know more details. But oh. I, because I had said in my message, like, you know, I'm happy to answer any awkward or weird questions without any judgment um, that you may have. But, you know, that's my, that, I don't have any secrets, but I do have HIV. So, <laughs> that's so, so gl- I, you said it's so glamorous. I know, right? Uh, so, <laughs> <It's> like, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These have always brought me luck. Welcome to HIV ASMR. <laughs> Um, but he, uh, <laughs> where's, where's the condom? I don't use any of those. I don't have any on me. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't even know how to open one. But, um, me no, the, uh, <laughs> but he said, you know, he was just like, naturally I'm curious and I would love to know more details, but I hope that, um, he's like, but there will be a time and a place for that. And it's not okay. important for me to know right now. And I was like, Oh, Oh wow, that okay. was really cute. Actually, cute. All right, yeah. I could. We can fuck. T- we can. We can. Yeah, I can fuck with you. Like, all yeah. right, I'll see you on the dance floor. And that's why I texted. I was like, all right, cute. I'll see you on the dance floor. But yeah. the, but the, the, you know, the end of it is that it. it I guess it's still developing. I haven't heard from him in a couple of days. But he had a friend in town, and I was kind of like giving him his space because I like to also take after you see each other's um a lot a lot or like text a lot for over. I like to just kind of give you your space. Yeah, a little like, little. Have you ever been in a situation off. where you slept with someone and then you sort of escalated a relationship and you got emotional and then you had to disclose to mm-hmm, them and mm-hmm. then so was it. Yeah. Was it tougher then, or did you feel like, it has not oh. been a it has not been a, 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 a like a net adverse situation in the end. Um, none of them seemed to work out for completely other reasons. Yeah. But um, the two most distinct ones that stand out in my mind is the ones that like kind of I think emotionally kind of like like touched me or, or at least made me remember them. Obviously, because yeah. I'm really bad at remembering details sometimes. But the ones that really stand in my mind are this one boy who was in Austin. Um, we had. <sighs> We met on Grinder. Maybe we'd gone for a date or like a drink or something beforehand. Yeah. Um, but he definitely came over like either that day or like the next day or whatever. Um, and we hooked up and incredible sex. Yeah. Um, but I didn't tell him. Um, and we used a condom. So at that point, I'm like doubly out of the game. I'm like, you know what? I didn't have to tell. You. I didn't have right. to technically tell you in the first place. No, right. I definitely don't have to. See, that's the thing with the, that with the criminalization that I just found out was that. They they criminalize it whether or not you use protection or not. Oh, We're not stop. right. Yeah, I, I didn't know that detail. Oh, that's just yeah. ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. It's like it's in, that was shocking because it's like. For me, if we're wearing a condom, then it's like we're cool. You know, we're cool. We don't we're need to cool. talk, have those awkward conversations. Exactly. Yeah. It's like it's fine if we do. It's fine if we don't because we're making a adult choice mm-hmm. right. to have protective sex. Right. So right. it's like. You're already taking. I mean, we're always but the t- fact that that's we're always at risk if we choose to 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 wear condom. Obviously, we're like, okay, we I take it today. I'm, away I'm like, adulting. Right, we're taking <laughs> away. Like, if we choose to but wear condom, choose, we take away ninety nine percent of it. Raw, but... I know that I'm crossing my fingers exactly. and hoping for the best. Right, right. fucking right. the best, and we're fucking for the best. Right. So I wonder. <laughs> I mean, how... we know as adults, if I'm going to do it raw, there's going to be a, a consequence. I'm going to be nervous. Right. right. Is there a movement now where people are trying to change these laws and, and sort of like update them based on the new developments? There's, there's, there's definitely some it, there's definitely some grassroots movement try, uh, underway to try to undermine these um, archaic laws, but uh, you know it's slow movement. Again, these aren't priority laws. Um, these right. aren't priority things that they're voting on. A full, uh, no one voting thinks on, about that. No yeah. one mm-hmm. wants to think. No one wants to think about right. that. You know what I mean? Like um, nobody wants to fucking deal with it, especially when yeah. it comes to QPOC. Yeah. No, we want to fucking deal with that shit. I don't know if I could ever really fully trust someone with my own uh, health, mm-hmm. body, right. exactly. body health, even exactly. if I'm in love and I trust, like, yeah, yeah. we're getting married, whatever. I feel like a part of me has to be responsible for my own health, no matter Absolutely. what. Yeah, no so one that's else why is gonna, no one else is gonna look out that look yeah. out for that for you. No, so that's why you. I think prep is such a cool yeah thing yeah. now that not a lot of people are aware of, and, and I, I think, think a lot of responsible to do. I also think. A lot of people outside of the queer community don't think about it either. Like no. a lot of girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. And they don't, too. and they and they finally. They don't. Here's my thing, because when I first started seeing the prep ads, they were only showing uh, queer, queer, yeah. and and trans, and then finally, just recently, mm-hmm. I'm like, finally, a fucking straight couple. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just for the queer community. No, no yeah. It's for every, anybody who is just having out there sex. and having yeah. sex. Yeah. 
And like I was, I kind of thought they were. I'm like, why are you only showing like the you know the LGBTQ community where you know straight people should be taking this shit too? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yep. I always thought that if I were to be like really into someone or being really intimate with someone and really connected with someone, even if they were to disclose to me that they were HIV positive, I, it, it wouldn't change my feelings, and I, I don't think I would. It would change my connection with them, or my mm-hmm. like, I would not stop mm-hmm. pursuing a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I mean, people have a lot of um, preconceived ideas and ways of thinking of things that uh, can be very hard to break out of. Yeah. Um, but um, it was never a thing for me. Like, if someone had HIV, I wasn't necessarily... That, that didn't turn me off. Um, I think that the two times that stand out in my mind the most of maybe having, like, already hooked up with someone and then they gotten into an intimate space where I thought maybe this, you know... I'd like to get to know them better than just naked. Right. And so I'll tell them now, now that we've already hooked up. It's funny uh, how sex a lot of times is like less intimate than yeah, all these other things. Yeah, isn't mm-hmm. that crazy? Yeah. yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot in my life lately because I've just kind of, you know, like, you know, we're all sluts in the summer, but, you know, as I as I age, I, I start to realize that I do actually need someone to talk to rather yeah. than just suck right, off. Right, right. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, my God, I just have this joke, I'm prep for the summer. <laughs> I'm prep for the summer. I'm oh, my God. Summer. God. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> Kiss from your brother. <laughs> Um, the other time was uh, on you know on that magical place of all magical places, Fire Island. Ah, and I had I was I had met someone at an underwear party that had a back room, so I went and blew. See, I always him hear about these freaking underwear parties, but I'm totally not invited. Go, go I'm to the never ice invited to any sex party. Girl, and I'm offended because you, girls are not invited. Yeah, well, do they turn so, the girls away at the door? I think they do. Oh. They totally do. Because oh. I, mean, I, I got I discriminated against in Fire Island. They're like, yeah. I tried going to the bathroom. He's like, it's on the other side. I was like, oh, okay. and then there was <laughs> no like, bathroom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like, I like the bushes. Yeah, prove to me, like prove to me I don't bush. have a dick and I can't walk in here. <laughs> like, like, I you. support everybody here. Hello. Thank you. My, I've given millions to your millions, fucking dog, community. Millions. Thank you. Do you know how long I fucking support the I got him prep. I got him prep. I got him prep. <laughs> don't tell your mother. <laughs> I'm prep for the summer. <laughs> oh my summer. god. Put a little prep in your step. <laughs> Oh my god, we should do a commercial. <laughs> We're gonna revolutionize okay, the prep. prep thing. Oh my god. You know, you need to endorse allegedly Thank you. NYC. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my god. Let us come up with your marketing campaign. Yeah, we exactly. could do this. So um I'm on Fire Island. Uh I'm at the underwear party. I meet this gorgeous, gorgeous daddy. Mm. He Ugh. uh takes me to the back room where I blow him, and then oh. he goes home and we have plans to meet up on the beach later the next day. Cute. Um locals. Locals. Ugh, locals. That's, really what locals so local. That's the most magical part of it. And <laughs> because if you're around. there for a day, you're still carrying your bag around. You're always trying to find a place to hide your bag. But when yeah. you get to stay there, there's a freedom to literally being go able to just like go and do whatever you want to do. Because yeah. you can always come back to your bag, yeah. which is in your home, in your bed, or in a bush, or in a bush. Yeah. You, know, you know, I did definitely see some people camping out in someone's yard. So, oh my god, uh, I love it. Did you go in the gardens? Did you go on dig dog? I dig dog. Wait, are you talking about is the everyone? Meat everyone? Bag? Everyone? No, no. It's just another. Well, this is too dick doc where everyone gets like <laughs> blown people holding out on me? it's so funny because last time I was a fire dick, island where the fuck is dick doc at yeah it's I don't I, it's <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you yeah. dick doc, dick doc. <laughs> we don't want to give away too many secrets on here I, allegedly it's I, on the, it's allegedly on fire the dick island dick doc. Yeah. but like I, I last time I was like there was a time I was there and I had just met someone I was dating's mm-hmm. like dad's friend and uh-huh. we we're like dancing the uh-huh. dawn summer uh-huh. and like two seconds later he's getting his dick sucked on dick dog the dad no the friend's dad and oh. i was like oh Ooh, my god hot. i like i just met him and he's wow. like older distinguished you know all this shit and i was like holy crap and then this summer i see him for the first time since i saw him on dick dog he's like <laughs> so he's like he's like hey dick hey because I, I thought we had this like secret yeah he's like remember when you saw me get my dick sucked i was like <laughs> Yeah, he's like I, you know, I didn't want he's to. Like, I, we're married now. Yeah, he's like I wasn't sure I wasn't oh to say God. hi. Stop. I was like you were busy. 
shit happens on Daddy TikTok. Daddy TikTok. Daddy TikTok. But go oh. on. I got invited to this like private nude party. That's pretty cool. Unquote, that's that's which, big deal. Uh, where you had to go and your door fee was a donation to um oh. to I think to one of the AIDS charities in the city. Gorgeous. Yeah, actually, actually, I think it was I think it was like a youth outreach AIDS um uh, wow. charity. Yeah, so a amazing, sex party right? With a, a sex party with a theme. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're, that's genius. We're, actually, we're fucking for the best. Fucking for the we're best. We're fucking for the best. We're fucking for the kids. That's actually so, awesome. That's a good vibe. The kids, you know, do it, do it for the kids. That's a good vibe, that's, right? Yeah. Again, we should be writing the marketing campaigns. Yeah, for like sex Seriously. parties should feel like you're contributing. Like, yeah, it's like you're giving more than just a load. Instead of yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> give, give loads of help to someone else. <laughs> I swallowed for this call. Right. <laughs> I swallowed so you could have health care. <laughs> oh so, um, so I, I, so anyways, I see my daddy on the beach and, um, we have plans to meet up again the next day for, on the beach, maybe. And then, um, I show up to this and then se- separately I get invited to, uh, the, to this, um, to this new private nude party and I show up and lo and behold, who is one of the hosts, but my beach daddy. Shut up. Yes. Oh so God. he and I like have this beautiful moment there at the at at the at the sex party, this really beautiful intimate moment. We uh. have sex together. We're the first person we're the first people that we each other fucked. Uh, and, for the you know, night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm like, yeah, the, for the night. Right, 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 right. For for, for, for that ten minutes. From <laughs> then and then you know, modern gay romance. It's like camp. It's like you're a uh, camp. Yeah, you really are you really are a gay yeah. summer camp there. Yeah, it's literally gay summer camp. And it's like I hope we see next show the next year. Yeah. XO, yeah. XO. Yeah. <laughs> How's your winter? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Did you get the share? Yeah. Um and then when uh, and then I saw him again one more time before I left uh, before I left there uh, before I left Fire Island he was it was like one of his last nights and he invited me over to the hot tub and so I went and hung out with him and, and you know we had sex that, that night I think um, or maybe the next morning but the point is that we had sex again um, and it was and, and you know we're just getting to know each other and, right. and it was very very casual it was not like super you know like weird and my thing is in environments such as circuit parties uh, uh, sex parties right. um, fire island in general right. um, those kinds of those kinds of very over sexualized spaces where people are a lot of people are fucking with yeah. or without condoms but with random abandon whether right. or not you're wrapping it up you're fucking a lot of people typically or you're just right last time I was there a friend of ours was like I'm, I'm gonna go have raw sex right like specifically was like I'm gonna yeah. go have, it's like a thing like a, I'm gonna go raw dog some guy I'll be yeah. right I'll be right back like, like bring right back. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. So I was like, like oh, it's bring like, out a fucking condom. I'm leaving. It's a yeah, thing. Yeah, right. The, yeah, it is. And so wow. the and and the thing is, is that um, in those environments, I do not feel any social responsibility on my end for your feelings or for your own um, like for your feelings or for oh. your own insecurities or hangups about HIV like right. that's your shit and if you're worried about it right. you can fucking ask me I'm not gonna tattoo it so on my ass so do you feel cheek. like there's almost like an unspoken like kind of agreement in those in those environments where it's like uh, many of us mm-hmm. may or may mm-hmm. not be mm-hmm. have exposed to HIV right. and we're agreeing to like or is it like a trust thing where it's like okay we trust that people are either not if like, it's if it's a sex party mm-hmm. like and everyone's so open they're ready to bone yeah. and have a good time is that a place where you have to tell them your tea no and that's what but I'm saying but you would think that be maybe before you all were active everyone would say okay let's have this conversation before but oh, that's not the way it works oh, no oh, baby, they I'm don't, thinking, we don't have heart, we don't have heart I'm circles at the sex like, party yeah. sweetie no see I'm thinking that's about like work. here's your communication <laughs> stick yeah here's your communication stick yeah exactly now you're right, right. To speak. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm thinking like as soon as you go in there you're, you're listening to Junior Vasquez in 2.2 seconds you're putting yes. your panties at the door yes. and you're getting already right, getting but I mean, a lot of it is just you're, you're just you're just assuming you're assuming and a lot of it is assumption which is a huge part of the reason which is not really communicating it's not communicating and it's another reason why it can it, these situations can be dangerous for people that aren't taking their own precautions to protect themselves because you can't expect someone else to protect you you cannot yeah. expect someone else to protect you you have to mm-hmm. um, you have to remember that like we're all only looking out for ourselves right at the end of the day, especially somewhere like New York City we're all fucking busy I don't have time to, yeah. to worry about someone else's sexual health besides this is why I always I always worry about like these chem sex uh, party oh, vibes for that's sure. like a yeah. that's like a thing where like mm-hmm. a lot of like mm-hmm. gay men mm-hmm. are 
They sort go of, and they smoke a bunch of meth and they do a bunch of G and a yeah. bunch of ecstasy and, they and there's definitely just no communication there. Absolutely no communication. There's like there. no communication. They're not even halfway aware of what's going on. Exactly. And, and that's like a, that's another level of it. I that's think a that's whole a whole other, other level. Yeah. And while there's while there while there are definitely like instances that I've been where maybe um, like Tina has been present. Maybe she showed up. Like that was something they were doing <laughs> Wait, over. Wait, Tina. We have to. Exp- I, Maybe some of our viewers doesn't know what Tina, who Tina is. Uh, who is our, Tina? Um, Tina's this girl. I don't really hang out with her. I don't really like her very much. But she comes around to some of these parties that I'm at. And um, no, Tina is just a, a, a euphemism for meth in the gay community. Oh, yeah. Tina. Yeah. Like Kitty. Like Kitty, exactly. Like Kitty or Molly. You know, like our, our friend Molly or, or like, you know, our oh, friend Tina. Kitty. Oh, Tina. She sounds messy. She's a little messy. She yeah. gets a little messy. Yeah. You, you can she loves, But she loves her rosé. Or she... <laughs> She loves her rosé and she loves her mouth. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She gets a little turnt. And, um, and, but, you know, so in those situations, that's a whole nother level. Um, and there, those are very dangerous situations because you, like you said, you know, you're, ha- you're unaware of what's even reality is at that point yeah. in, right. in certain circumstances. But, um, you know, at the same time, there's also the same, the same level of base assumption goes into those parties as it does into, you know, a more tame sex party where it's, I'm going to assume that if you have something you can pass to me, I hope you wouldn't be here, even though that's not really like right. realistic. We can't expect But do you think do this that, lack but... of communication has something to do with like, and I feel like a lot of times men are afraid to be vulnerable and, um, intimate with other men in, in not sexually, but I mean like Verbally. emotional, emotionally. Mm-hmm. So do you think that this lack of communication has something to do with men being afraid of being intimate with other men on that level? Like, is there like this fear of like communicating and connecting with another man, uh, emotionally and being vulnerable where it's like, absolutely. You, you don't. So, absolutely. Yeah. And, and especially in, especially in an environment where, um, you know, I, I, at a sex party, for example, um, I don't want to say something that might make this hot guy not want to fuck me. You're like, I don't want to kill the mood. I don't want to kill the fucking yeah, we're mood. We're all here but to But I also want to, yeah. like, protect myself. But I also myself. want to protect yeah. myself. So like, what, yeah. Right. Um, and, I, and there are certain sex parties. Well, can I ask you a question? Like, yeah. like, in a sex party, you... you you could choose whether to wear a condom or absolutely. not, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. like, if you just chose to wear a condom the whole night, that's just that's what just, is, yeah, yeah, then your thing. That's one. But maybe thing that's also list. like a stigma within that community where it's like, oh, you want to wear a condom, you're kind of like a pussy. And it very much is that, there is there is a little bit of a almost like a reverse stigma now that that I've that I've noticed not against me, but like right. that I've noticed people have told me about like where people, um, you know, almost not not wanting raw sex, especially online. Like having it in your profile, being like right. no bareback sex, like is actually like stigmatizes them in a way that like you know, or so people insane. that are like looking for the same the same way that like when app culture came into in, into being, and all of a sudden now we you know the stigma is against the person that wants the long term relationship who is totally against hookups. It's like, right. well, why are you on grinder? Get the fuck out grinder right. kind of thing. Like you know, they say that these are their sponsors that they get, but you know. That's that in that way. I, I, you know, I've I've had some people express it like just because they don't want raw sex that all of a sudden they feel stigmatized against because now because it's obvious as though they're oppressing you and it's like no, I just want. It's sex. funny. I had that happen to me in Europe. I was in Greece and I was with this guy that I knew. I thought we were friends and we were like mm-hmm. fucking up and stuff and we were about to have sex and I was like, oh, let's get a condom and he's like. A condom, like, oh my god, you American girls, like, you <laughs> condoms, and I was like, oh my god, are you trying to make me feel bad for like wanting to protect? Are you sex? condom shaming me? Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> it, there was this strange shaming that I never experienced, where I was like, wow, but I mean, maybe I have experienced it, I didn't even realize because there's always this. There is this fear of like asking to have protected sex. Right. Like yeah. there's this thing of yeah. like this nervousness yeah. where it's like, oh my god, I'm I'm gonna kill the mood, I'm gonna kill the vibe, or it's just like they're going to think that I maybe like, Some sort of or, or God forbid a girl actually has a condom in her purse. Right. They oh, think you're, true. they're, they're like, yeah. Oh wow. You have condoms. Like, yeah, it's like this all, there are so many levels of like, no, you're right. Stigma. You're so right. Yeah. And, and I think that, I think that, there, you know, like if anything, it shows us that, um, it's really dumb to assume that, it, that someone's, if they've got something, they're just going to stay home. And not go to the sex party, you know, like, I don't right. know what their tea is. They, they could have literally anything. But at the same time, um, you know, that also, I think, factors into um, the fact that the overall 
uh, air is that they don't they don't care. And it's not even that they don't care. It's that they you know like they assume that they're well, protecting sex. themselves. You well, know? also I mean, sex so, is something I've had that's like people grab thoughtless. a condom and put it on and then yeah. we fuck and that's cool you know like do whatever like do I enjoy it as much no no one does like right. everyone likes macaroni Let's and cheese and nobody likes condoms like that's just like laws of the universe yeah. but I fucking hate condoms I fucking hate condoms and I fucking <laughs> love mac and cheese but the but at the end of the day you know like re- regardless of whether or not you grab that condom you have made a decision in your own head of how you're going to make you know go through your own night and how that's going to play out in your own sexual health Right. When you go to the doctor in two weeks for your regular checkup yeah. and she says you have gonorrhea, you're like, oh, damn it. You know? Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and talking to us so oh intimately, God, Siler. You. That yeah, was great. Absolutely. You um, were really. Is there anything, what advice would you give like young, like queer kids now that are like learning well, about? Um, if you are newly positive, my, the best thing I have to tell you is that, um, and because this is what I have had to tell myself sometimes every single day, um, is that you are still beautiful. Mm-hmm. And um, y- people will still love you. Um, this will definitely show you who is true in your life, um, but also realize that um, you know the true people will stick with you, um, and you will have sex again. I promise. Yes. Like s- someone's gonna yeah. believe me. Really hot. R- the hottest people I know have HIV. The hottest people it's I know have, all have like. I, feel like, all have well, I feel like at this point, it's almost, it's, this is where it ties into the other uh, conversation about disclosure with like the trans thing. Uh-huh. I feel like when you do disclose, and if someone is like who was into you before is suddenly not, it's almost like a bit of you're transphobic because you have this like preconceived notion of what a trans person is, and yeah, so you've suddenly exactly. turned me into a freak, right. which I'm not, which I'm the same person you like right. just slept with. Exactly. Right. So I feel like it's that's where the bridges kind of cross Mm -hmm. where it's like when you disclose your status and if you are undetectable, I think at this point in time, we should all be informed enough to not like treat someone as if they're a freak or like something like make them feel ostracized. Yeah. Or dangerous or like, like the criminalization says like a biological weapon. It's like Mm -hmm. the times have changed and I think people need to educate themselves Mm -hmm. enough to even be able to have partners who are HIV positive and not feel that, fear or like feel like feel that like 1990 vibe it's like girl let's move yeah. on let's That's, evolve and yeah. my other last let's word read. is my, my <laughs> yeah. last word read is, is read fucking him. never say you're sorry for it yeah um yeah it is i know sometimes it is easy when i'm disclosing something to especially someone that i think may have a weirdness about it or may not know how to take it and i'm just you know i'm really nervous like is to be like you know like like is to almost apologetically tell them that you have hiv but don't it's don't you dare fucking apologize for it right because it is not your fucking fault and it's not their fucking fault and they don't they don't have any control over you or and 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 have no no guilt to put on you and people want it will want to put guilt onto you because you're the easy scapegoat but yeah remember it you do not have anything to be to to be sorry for and don't you ever dare fucking apologize to someone for it damn right exactly yeah and if people are like that you don't want them in your life anyway you don't want yeah fuck them you don't want those motherfuckers in your life anyway anyway. you know what the dick is bad anyways so (laughs) No. That's like a yeah, that, that, that dick is tainted. He's negative. Oh <laughs> 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 oh my god! Well, thank you, Siler, oh, for joining thank us. Thank you so, you know, so, so much. Excited to be we here. I'm so glad to, I we were planning this for a while. Break it down for you. Yeah. 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 And yes, I'm glad thank we you. Made it happen. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love yes. you guys. Oh yes. Love you too, baby. So on that so, note, yes. mm-hmm. um, don't forget to email us. Twitter us. Subscribe. Slip into my DM. Yeah, Touch that in. dirty purple button on your <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> says. And now, because now I have an Android, so you have to find us on SoundCloud, I guess. We're going to try to get on Spotify. I'm going to work it out. But Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, iTunes. Mm-hmm. All that good all stuff. That, and yeah. allegedly nyc at gmail.com. Yeah, write us. And if you have write any, uh, if you want to send Siler some love letters, because he's really gorgeous. <laughs> Everyone wants to bone Siler. Everyone wants to bone Siler. If you want to send me some love letters, flood the DMs. Yes. I'm, I'm looking love to be flooded. Yeah. Oh my yes. God. What's your, do you want to like give out your? Oh, it's uh, Siler Says. That's uh, C-Y-L-E-R-S-A-Y-S. <laughs> you have a good, you, you know what? 
He has a you good give, voice. You, you, have, you, you, have, you give really good Instagram. I hate that God we didn't have time it. to include this into the whole discussion too, but like the fact that Pose has so heavily laid on the entire like telling everyone like like the HIV disclosure thing. Oh my God. Yes. As I was watching that, I'm jaw dropped. Really? I was like, this oh is God, on yes, television? Yes. yes. Oh, oh God. right. Oh my God. Yeah, Pose has really changed the Pose game. Pose has really changed the fucking game. And yeah. I was actually laying with someone um, watching Pose and like, and they knew I had HIV and when, and when um, Pray Tell was like talking it was on the date when he tells. Oh my god, and the kiss. Oh, and then yes, the kiss. Right. Huge spoiler, uh, obviously. In the sheet. Oh, yeah, in the if you haven't seen it, like, if we you don't, haven't we're seen not it, then I don't want you to fucking yeah, talk friends. to me. Anyways. Do not slide my DMs if you haven't seen Pose. <laughs> Pose is really, like, really important show right now. Yes. yes, it is, it is. That's cool. Uh, well, so, take us away on our, you know, we always end, oh, yes. end these show with a little bit of freestyle. Just a little bit of freestyle. Mm-hmm. We're near you know, a weekend to the core. goes a long way. A long way. So, uh, really this know. one sounds like a fire hydrant on, <laughs> which we used to call a pump. A pump. Girl, we're going to walk by the pump. Oh, my uh, God. You want to go play in the pump? You want to play, play in the play pump? Let's go play in the pump. pump. This reminds me of a summertime in a pump. It's a total summertime in a pump. And she got that curly wet hair on. Oh, my God. What is this? Wait, what are we about to We're just giving you fantasy. Um, okay, this is this is Buffy, and it's give me a reason. Oh my god! Here, okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, see you next time. Bye, kids. You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly.
You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly.